Hello everybody, welcome back to Arthur Next Plays King Arthur, the role-playing war game. So we're gonna, uh, when we left off, we had just uh, rescued Sir Balan from his brother and arch nemesis Sir Balin, and now uh, we're gonna end our turn. Uh, and we currently, um, our next objective is over here at the Lady of the Lake. So we're gonna take our army and we're gonna march over there. Um on my way. So it's summer, so our movement is increased, and we're following a road, so our movement is increased even more. And because these are our allies' lands, we can move through them without our ally getting upset. The Lady of the Lake. This is the village of Wick upon Winter, where Sir Gret Gareth receives his incurable wound while searching for the Lady of the Lake. First, you have to find the druid who will tell you how to talk to the lady. All right, we're going to have send Sir Kay on this adventure. Wick upon Winter is a small and desolate settlement near the woods. Only a few village elders are sitting by the town hall, staring blankly at the ashen clouds. The wind smells of stale water and smoke. I will have a word with the elders. When you convince the elders that you are indeed a knight of the round table, they soon open up and warn you about the strange soldiers who recently destroyed an entire army. They are monsters, they say, savages from the northern provinces who seek the Lady of the Lake. Um, I heard that a druid lives around here. What can you know about him? The druid is a silent man who rarely leaves his shrine in the woods. Follow the stream to the spring. You will find his hut there. Tell me about the recent battle. The elders tell you about the survivors of the last battle. After the northerners destroyed their army, they settled near the lake, setting up a camp in the woods. The villagers will lead you there if you arrange a much-needed supply of food for their families. Uh, right, you'll get your food. Now lead me to the survivors. Two young villagers guide you through the deep forest to a glade where you find the survivors. A small band of tired soldiers looks at you hesitantly. We've never seen an army like this, they say. Savages and monsters. We have no chance against those beasts. Um, sure, why don't you join my army? I'll pay you 1,000 gold. They actually won't join me for this fight, but they will join me afterwards. The commanding presence of the knight from King Arthur's court gives a new hope to these tired and disappointed men. One after another, they join their, your ranks. I return to the village. Um, all right, so I already did this. Let's go. Uh, let's see, did I do all of the options here? Tell me about the Northern Army. The elders admit they never really saw the Northerners close at hand, but an old boatman who lives near the lake had to ferry their leaders to the furthest shore many times. You should ask him. Go to the old boatman. The old boatman lives on a hill above the shore. From what you can see, where you can see the lake clearly in huge blocks of stone with faded carvings protruding from the soil. The boatman proves to be a greedy old man who asks for 200 gold before I tell you anything. All right, take the gold. Pay the old man and he tells you what he saw. He seems terrified by these northerners. They are savages, he says. They serve a dark force that sent them on this long journey. They keep huge beasts that prowl and attack at night. You, don't, you stand a better chance in the daytime. I heard about a druid in these woods. Do you know him? Yes, he is a gentle, peaceful soul. He lives in the woods at the spring. All right, return to the village and we'll go find the druid. The druid is an old man in the traditional outfit of the followers of the old faith. His hut stands near a shrine. You notice him eyeing your soldiers suspiciously. When you tell him what you know about Sir Gareth and his quest, he greets you warmly. Tell me how I can speak to the Lady of the Lake. The Lady of the Lake is an ancient presence. She has always been here, sleeping the sleep of waters, awakening in times of need. You can speak to her on the hidden island that you can only reach at dawn. However, if you have the Horn of Avalon, you can cross there at any time. Where can I find the Horn of Avalon? I am the keeper of the horn. I should give it to you, but on one condition, if your king promises me that he will let me live here unharmed and that no one will enter my territory. These woods and the lake should be a forbidden place to anyone else. Um. <coughs> so, we're going to be followers of the old faith, so we'll accept that. Live in peace. I'll also earn the respect of the believers of the old faith. The druid seemed content. He hands you the horn. It looks very humble, a piece of carved bone inscribed with ancient symbols. He tells you that you should be careful because those northerners plan to seek out the Lady of the Lake as well, and they have their own purposes. Good luck. Right, let's go to the lake. You stand on the southern shore of the lake. Everything is quiet. The wind smells fresh water, and you see nothing that would betray the presence of anything magical. But deep in your soul, you feel this is one of the most important 
places in Britannia. So we're going to wait until dawn. When the shimmer of dawn paints a bridge of light on the surface of the lake, it leads to an island you hadn't noticed before. When you reach the island, in awe, you hear the din of the northerners. You have arrived late, and now you have to fight. So uh, we're going to wait till the fog clears up. Uh, and so here we have the northern army. We've got wargs, we've got giants, and we've got um, uh, changelings, winter, winter soldiers, humans who were kidnapped by the Shi and um, forced to serve in their armies. So, this is not, despite the fact that we theoretically outnumber them, this is not going to be an easy fight. Giants have, even though there's only two in a stack, in these stacks, they can be up to three, they have an absolute ton of hit points. And this is another fight. It's our second in a row, and I'm, they are not that common, but <laughs> we just had two in a row where there are no victory conditions. Um, we just have to kill them all. All right, so we're going to let them come to us. They don't have any archers, so archers, archers, I'm going to put my archers back against archers. the back wall of the map here. Archers. And we are going to surround them with defenses. So I'm going to put them in a line like that. Infantry. Infantry. We'll put the golden griffins in the middle of our um, formation. Um, we'll put the strongest force of heavy footmen next to them. Wait, I think I'm going to do it like that. Um, then the second strongest force. And actually... Um, yeah, I think I'll do that. Alright, what do I have left? Footmen. The footmen to guard that side. And then we just have our oh, one more footman. Um, sure, we'll put him there, I guess. Then I have room in him for our formation and our formation for him. So we'll put our cavalry off to this side. Uh, put one cavalry on each side for possible flanking maneuvers. And I think we are ready. So we're going to start the battle. I'm going to pause. I'm going to tell my army to hold position. Alright, now we're going to unpause. So I'm going to speed it up. So, I know from my experience in this game, the AI is a little funny. It's going to send its wargs way out in front. As soon as I actually start shooting, as soon as I actually start shooting at the wargs, they'll turn around. So what I want to do is let them get about halfway to me and then start shooting them. That way they'll have the most, I don't want them to get to me, but I want to have the most possible time to shoot at them as I can. So I turned off fire at will, so they won't start shooting as soon as they get in here. Oh, speed it up. No reason for you to be so slow. All right, now I'm gonna slow it back down. All right, they're coming in through the trees, which is a little annoying. I'm gonna cut down on the amount of damage I do. So as soon as these guys clear the trees, Wait for it. Now. Hmm. I waited a little bit too long. So these guys are actually going to attack me. Well, that's actually probably fine.
Let's move the cavalry up here. So I don't actually want my archers to fight in melee against the dogs because they'll die. So we'll move them back. And then we'll keep them roughly in formation. Um, Infantry. 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 Um, we'll go ahead and do a cleave. Although he's way at the back of this army, so that may have been a mistake. So we're losing a bunch of these light cavalry, but that's okay. Better them than the archers. Sir Kay is just plowing through these guys, though. It's good. Lots of experience for him. shooting them. Two left. They should be dead by the time those giants get here. One left. So down to three of those heavy infantry and 13 light cavalry. Acceptable losses. All right, we've actually done a ton of damage to those giants. However, uh, you stay here, infantry. you stay here. Infantry. Attack. You we have find permission to go attack those guys, infantry. you. Also have my permission to go attack these guys. As do you. All right. You go attack that guy. You guys stop firing. Hold position. Wait, no. Shoot these guys. Those guys are light infantry. You should be able to kill them. All right, we killed those giants. These guys I did not get a chance to shoot at, so they're going to be a little bit harder. Infantry. They are dying pretty quickly, though. Oh, no. You stay there. You stay there. Here, two autumn breeds and another one over here that's getting wrecked. Okay, infantry, infantry. Okay, switch to those guys. Attack these guys, these guys attack these guys. 
And these swing around and flank them. back up. You guys attack. You guys move over for the flank. Stop firing. Um, activate cleave. There's nothing you can do. Dragon strike. Uh, sure. 14. Ten. Let's do the ten winter breeds. Infantry. Attack. All right. That went fairly well. We took some casualties, but didn't lose any team. 61 soldiers actually is pretty good. Um, especially since their, the quality of their soldiers is better than the quality of mine for the most part. The autumn breeds do kind of suck. So, uh, so that's going to unlock troop recruitment for us, um, which is good. The Excalibur is a mighty sword, ancient and powerful. It was created by the Lady of the Lake ages ago. When King Arthur pulled the Excalibur out of the magic stone, the world changed and the sword lost all of its powers. But now it is restored to its former glory and ready to change the world again. All right. So, yeah, look at that. All of that juicy experience we got on our heroes. That's pretty sweet. Um, we lost some heavy infantry and some light cavalry, but nothing too serious. And we gained 2,000 food and 2,000 gold. Take my advice, my good king. You need a stronghold. It will serve as your seat of power. Strongholds are not ordinary towns or castles. They are built on the few truly sacred places of the realm. And now you have to choose one of these possible spots. London or Viraconium. Both of them have almost lost their former power, though. You will need to use the magical sword Excalibur to perform a rite which will make your stronghold live again. You have the legendary weapon of the ancients, the fabled Excalibur, with them, and with a magic sword in your hand, how could anyone question your right to rule the land? The people in your provinces bow their heads to the once and future king. You can begin to collect taxes, recruit armies, and prepare for challenges, since the high kings of Britannia will not be as obedient to you as your faithful subjects. Okay, so um, our two options are London or Vericonium. Of those two, we were going to go for London because um, you get a lot of bonuses in the provinces that are adjacent to your stronghold and to your main to your strongholds. And London is adjacent to one, two, three, four, five provinces, including some of the richest provinces in on the map. Verconium is adjacent to one, two, three provinces, um, and so yeah, we're gonna go for for London. Also, you know, it's London, London town. Okay, um, so we're out of movement, and oh, we don't actually have any active quests. If we look at our morality chart, we're we're drifting over here, and we unlocked furlough, which is an action. 
It requires all this active. The army requires minus 50% upkeep costs. The army can't move, and only 50% of the droid is drawn in the battles. The food and gold income of the province is reduced to zero. I rarely use this. Um, but we also unlocked yeomen, and I use them all the time. They're spearmen, and um, they're a really good light infantry type unit. Um, they're 48 in a stack. They have great stats. Um, and yeah, they're pretty good. So I use them all the time. Um, all right, well, we've completed this turn. We're very poor, although we do have a lot of food. Uh, so we'll end our turn. And we should get a quest relatively soon for these two to join our empire. Um, Long live the once and future king. A banished prince of Logris invites you to his wedding in Wessex, the kingdom which is right in the path of your army's advance towards London. The provinces of Logris and Wessex had long-standing territorial disputes with each other. You might as well use them to your own advantage, or instead, you might find other more diplomatic ways to have your way. So that's the London quest. My good and gracious lord. Three brothers are fighting for the city of Viraconium. Their father, the king, died without naming his successor, and now each of them has claimed the right to the throne. Both the Christian Prince Brandelis and Prince Owain, the follower of the Old Faith, have asked for your help against each other and against their third brother in the city. You might find a way to use their dispute for your own purposes. So we're prob we're largely going to ignore that quest since we're not going for Vericonium. Um, but we can look at it on the objective screen. So go to London, conquer Vericonium. Either way, I'll get those two heroes to join me. Heirs of Vericonium or Seeds of War, which is over here. Um, so we'll do that, but we are going to refresh our army first. So I'm going to just get rid of these guys. And I'm going to send you back to this village. See, our military here is in the green, so we can recruit troops here. It's autumn. Autumn is a good time to recruit troops because it's like you get a free season of recruitment. Um, because winter is coming up next. So... We will fill up ranks, um, and we'll see what we can afford. We're not going to be able to afford a ton here. We'll definitely get those guys. Um, I'd like to get those guys, and that's pretty much all of our money. Um, can't even afford to get that. All right, if we don't get those guys, we can get those guys, which I would definitely like. We can get those guys. Okay. All right, so that's going to take us pretty much all of our gold in two seasons. So I will accept that. And yeah, I'm just going to end my turn. Watch them move their armies around the map. Greetings, my king. With the revival of magic, many wondrous items have surfaced again. But some of these magic weapons carry dark curses, like that which fell on the sword of Sir Balin. If you were able to remove the curse from that ancient sword of the Pendragons, you would have a powerful weapon in your possession. All right. So the cursed sword. Um, so we're going to go to the druids of Gloucester, which are all the way up here. Um, but first, we're going to level up our units. So start with Sir Kay. We're going to give him another point of magic and his fourth point of wisdom which is the maximum we can give him for this. Um, so Sir Gareth. 
Sir Gareth is going to get magic, and we're going to give him another level of Dragon's Eye, um, which is going to give mana cost plus 10, duration plus 30 seconds. So its duration is now one minute, um, which if we compare that to the duration of Fog of Avalon, Fog of Avalon lasts for two minutes. Uh, so we have a ways to go <laughs> in order to get those two to be the same. But still, an extra 30 seconds of shooting is very um, helpful. All right, so King Mark, um, I'm actually going to increase his magic as well. And we're going to give him cleave. Yeah, we're going to give him cleave. So that's how he's going. This is going to be his primary skill in combat, cleave and breath stealer. So we're going to level that. Mighty blow, swift attack, and breath stealer are going to be the skills we're going to focus on for him. And he is going to be an absolute powerhouse in combat. Uh, and a little bit later on, there'll be another skill we level for him too. But I'll s show you that when the time comes. All right, Golden Griffins, we'll take defense for them. Defense for the Sentinels. And our Archer, a Bowman, can get another rank of archery. Um, and who has the Cursed Sword right now? All right, so you have the Horn of Avalon. Um, so Fog of Avalon is a weather spell. In order to unlock these, we have to use weather spells. So he's the only one who's currently using weather spells. So we'll give him the Horn of Avalon. Um, and he has the Cursed Sword in his inventory. And I'm going to send Sir Kay to break it. But I think I don't think I can remove it from his inventory, so I'm going to have to send him as well. Okay, so we'll end this turn. There are giants in the woods of Britannia. And now they have kidnapped the son of the king of Somerset. Will you risk the life of your warriors and send them to the woods to rescue the heir? The reward is huge. The ruler of the province would become your vassal. Right, so this is the one I've been waiting for. So this will give us these two provinces for free. Um, All right, good. I want to send him up with the Cursed Sword. Um, yes, my liege. So he's going to go by himself. He can't make it there this turn. On my way. Got it. Okay. And in the meantime, yes, my lord. the rest of the army, maybe I should have saved those footmen. Got a couple of spare spots. The rest of the army is going to go up here and do this quest and try and bring this I'm province right. under my control. So it happened that Prince Brevadier, the oldest son of the King of Somerset, went hunting with a small band of men into the forest where he's kidnapped by giants from the darkest reaches of the wood. Someone has to rescue him. Someone like me. Uh, hmm. I'm going to send King Mark on this quest. I mean, he has Here's for combat. What does he have? 100% recruitment cost and own few thumbs and plus three coils. You know, he's a really good ruler as well. Um, Of these three, I'm going to send King Mark now. 
my tenants or Gareth either. Mm, let's say King Mark. You ride with your faithful soldiers until you reach the heart of the forest where the giants live. It is one of the primeval woods of Britannia, a dark, dangerous place, and the soldiers whisper fearfully about the gods living among the trees. After a few days of marching, you reach a village. It is immediately obvious that something is amiss here, as there is not a soul in the streets. Many houses have their doors bashed in, and some have even collapsed. You find signs of battle. Uh... Search the houses for survivors. You search the houses thoroughly and find a group of scared villagers hiding in a barn. One of them tells you a group of giants attacked the village and took with them anyone who didn't manage to escape. Let's see if he knows where the giant's camp is. Um, he tells you they dare not even go to the next village. They are so afraid of running into the giants. However, there is a forest ranger living nearby, and he might know where these monsters set up camp. Let's examine the signs before we go look for the ranger. You follow, examine the signs of battle. This is obviously the work of giants. Only they are capable of following the destruction of such destruction. Alright, I follow the tracks. You easily follow the giant's tracks. They have trodden a wide path. The terrain becomes steeper and steeper and the trees give way to rocks. After a while you arrive in a canyon. It's towering walls, walls towering above you. In the distance you notice some movement. So this is a leadership check. This is a magic check. Alright, so I'm going to send out scouts. You said, send a few men out to see what's ahead. After a few minutes, you see a huge rumble and see a cloud of dusk emerge from between the rocks. Only one scout returns and tells you the canyon walls have collapsed, but it's possible to continue by climbing over the rocks. So let's go talk to the ranger. On the way to the ranger's cabin, you suddenly hear loud grunting noises from beside the road. As you sneak closer, you see two giants in a clearing eating some kind of food. You see no humans with them. I have my army surround the clearing and tell them to surrender. Your men surround the clearing and stand before the giants with your retinue. They grab their weapons immediately, but seeing they are outnumbered, they don't attack. I offer them their lives if they will serve me. The two giants accept your terms. They grudgingly tell you they know nothing about the other giants and have no idea where they are. Your men don't take heartily to the company of the new allies, but like good soldiers, none of them questions the wisdom of your decision. So now I have giants in my army, which is awesome. Um, although it is going to lower my morale in battle. Following the villager's directions, you find the ranger's cabin easily. Apparently, he was lucky enough not to be found by the giants. He's chopping wood when you arrive. When he sees you, he stops working and greets you. The villager says you might know where the giant's camp is. Yes, I did see them during my walks. Their camp is at the ruins of the old tower. They are huge, fearsome creatures, and I dared not go too close. But I did see the kidnapped humans. The giants are forcing them to rebuild their tower. I asked the ranger to lead me to the giants. The ranger is happy to lead you to the camp. Uh, hoping you would drive the monsters out of these lands. Already from afar, you can see lots of captured humans working on the reconstruction of the tower. The prince must be somewhere here, too. Um, so I can try their leader and try to bargain about the prisoners. I could sneak in at night and free the prince. Or I can attack the giant's camp. I think I'm just going to attack. attack. Um, so you see, I got two giants in my army now. I would really like them to survive this fight. This is a really tough fight. <laughs> this is a really tough fight, so this is going to be interesting. And again, this one has no victory locations. Okay, so... I'm going to set my army up over here and try and shoot the giants. So the giants are going to start over here and they're going to come down here. Um, and I'm going to set my army up back here and try and shoot them. They're going to come around the corner here and come down this road. I'm going to try and shoot them as they come down the road. Um, so. You can see we lost like one soldier from each unit Archers. because of those scouts thing. Archers. So that was uh, that was unfortunate. Um, and then we have these guys. I 
these guys are going to have any chance against giants, which is not much. They're probably all going to die, but it would be fighting them in heavy woods. So I'm going to keep them over here, try and have them hide. Same thing with these guys. Try and have them hide and ambush some of the giants when they come by. All right. Yeah, so you can see these guys are all, this icon means they're hidden. So if I tell them to hold, hopefully they'll stay hidden until the fight. Actually starts. So again, hopefully the wargs will rapidly outpace the giants so we can get some good shots on them before the giants get here. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, turn off fire well, turn on hold your ground. Actually, I'm going to switch positions. I'm going to put the golden griffins in the middle. Here are the wargs. Are they going to wait for the giants? I don't know, but I don't like it. Whatever they're doing. set themselves up on a big line and rush me all at once. Oh, I forgot about these guys. That's what they're doing. They're going after these guys. come.
Okay. No, and normally I would do this on the giants, but it has a very low chance of actually working on them. So we do that on the wargs. These guys. Let these guys retreat. Unfortunately, the giants are faster than they are. is down. Not surprising. Alright, I'm just going to have those archers fire on those guys. Suck up the collateral damage. Alright, King Mark. Oh, that's right, you have Cleave now. Guardian Angel. Cleave. How's this going? Eight. Eight. Not sure if we're going to win that or not. Archers, archers, archers. Fire. Force. We'll switch to shooting these guys. How's this going? Well. We're going to take those giants down. Cavalry. 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 I prefer these cavalry not get totally wiped out. Cavalry got totally wiped out. Oh well. Infantry. All right. I mean, they might have held on just long enough, though. Oh, those are my giants. Right. Let's bring them around and have them flank these giants. Oh. So most of those troops were totally wiped out. You gotta kill these wargs. Kill. See what we can do with these giants before they get here. The average hit point is quite low. As 
long as we win this fight, I'm going to be happy. We can take as long as we want resting up before the next one. Come on. Yes. Giants are down. What about these giants? One left. Okay, we lost Sir Balin. Woo! That fight is close. That fight is always close, though. Whenever I play, whenever I play through this game, the fight is always close. Oh, we actually lost four teams. Most of those were light infantry, though. And two of our heroes got wounded. Yeah. He got 800 experience, though. He got 485. He died almost immediately. We saved one of our leveled up light cavalry, so that's good. We can refill them. Um, we lost all of our light infantry, uh, but we didn't. We kept the giants. We kept the bowmen. We kept our leveled up light cavalry. All in all, I have to call this a success. And I totally forgot about these guys. <laughs> battle mode would have been a little bit easier if we brought the Trini Knights to the battle, wouldn't it? Whoops. Those were the guys that joined us um, before we fought that other battle. So we'll move. Um, um, hmm, we got to move a hero over there to get them. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll put these two in charge of Bowman because we don't need to replenish those stacks. So we'll move them into a new army um, and then Sir Balin I'm going to assign you these two new provinces we picked up um, so that way because of your glorious leader it'll be a little bit cheaper to recruit in them and so we'll have you go here ranks and we still have some money left over and it will take two seasons all right well hang on before we do that yes my king first oh my you way. can't make it anyway um yes my lord all right um we have one two three four five six seven eight nine open spaces Minus five is four open spaces, so we can afford to recruit. Minus the those two, assuming we get them back, is two open spaces, so we can afford to recruit at least two more units. All right, so we're gonna fill up all the ranks, and we're going to recruit. I want another bowman for sure, and let's grab a yeoman. Three. This will be done in winter. That's suboptimal. But that's fine. And we'll end our turn. Oh. All yes, right, smiley. you guys. I'll pick these guys up. All right, that's almost perfect. Oh, and, oh. I guess I can't do that from the screen. There, I want you to command the turning knights. Okay. Ready to serve. And you are going to come up here. You won this quest, but that's going to be up in, in the next episode. So, an eventful episode. We got two new provinces, um, completed a bunch more quests, and uh, lost a ton of units. But we are regaining our strength, and we should be back up in plenty of time for the next 
adventure, which is going to be to go this way. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a terrific day.